Hi guys and welcome back to another video or welcome if this is your first time here. My name is Dana, I'm a mama to four and in today's video I'm going to be talking about how I choose my homeschooling curriculum, what that looks like for us and kind of what my thought process is when it comes to choosing what we'll be doing for the following year. I hope you guys do enjoy today's video and as always I'd love to have you join our family. You can do so by subscribing down below and with all that being said let's go ahead and jump into today's video. So choosing homeschooling curriculum, this is a big one because it can be very, very overwhelming with all the options out there now. It's funny, my mom and I actually talk about this a lot because back when I was homeschooled, if you're new here, I was homeschooled as well, K-12. And back when I was homeschooled, there was really only a handful of actual solid core curriculums to choose from when it came to homeschooling. Some of the big ones that were an option back then, one of them was a Becca book. We had Bob Jones, CLE was around, Rod and Staff and some big, I think also Sunlight and like the big core curriculum companies were around back then but there's so many other like smaller companies and smaller brands to choose from now and it can be really overwhelming because there's quite literally hundreds of things to choose from and one of the most beautiful things about that of being a homeschool mama in today's kind of world or society however you want to say that is that fact that we can literally fine-tune and cater to every single need that our children has and there's a huge blessing in that and benefit of that while also it can also be overwhelming <laughs> because it's it's like, where in the world do I start when it comes to choosing curriculum? So this is kind of what I do. And the first thing I'm gonna talk about is actually something that I have learned or am learning right now is I really think about the vision that I want our homeschool to be. But most importantly, and this is a big thing that I am kind of learning right now, as I mentioned before, that is also choosing a curriculum based off of what I need as the mama and as the teacher. Because sometimes I can really get caught up into thinking my child would love this, they would love this, oh, they would just adore this. And and so I try to find like the bright and the flashy and the beautiful things that maybe they would absolutely love for a time, but if it doesn't work or if it's not solid or if it causes me more stress and it takes away my whole vision of our homeschool because I have that specific vision. And so really trying to focus on what your vision is for your homeschool, what you want that to be. And then before you even look at curriculum, get that nailed down. So you have an actual idea or a mental picture of what you want your home and your space to be before you go into curriculum because you'd want the curriculum to serve you and your vision and your family and not the other way around. You don't want to kind of get a curriculum because it's beautiful and you have to kind of serve the curriculum, but you want it You want it to serve you. So one of the biggest tips I can give when it comes to choosing a homeschool curriculum, again, something I'm learning right now as well, is to really think about what you need as a mama as well because it makes a huge, huge difference. So after I've kind of gotten our vision for our homeschool, I can kind of move into, okay, this is what I want our homeschool to look like, so what do I need from it? Like, what do I need in this phase of life right now? Not what I need in, as far as like, what do I want my dream homeschool to be because it's never achievable, but what do I need right now in this phase of life that will help me as a teacher and mama? I just need something that is very simplified, open and go, ready, no prep work. I love the idea of being able to do all the extra things and making it work, but right now, just in our phase of life, that's not attainable or attainable attainable, I should say, or possible. So really having something open and go is the best thing for me and for my kiddos as well because it kind of, we all kind of work together and flow together when it comes to our homeschool, which then creates that vision that I was talking about. So really simplifying it down. This fall, I'm going to have a first and second grader as well as a three-year-old and then a one-year-old. So it's gonna be very, very busy still to the point where I still am in the years of just needing that open go. I am going to be in those years for quite a few years yet to come here. I am just needing that open and go curriculum and so thinking about that so even though I might like the look of this curriculum I might think it might work better but for me it's just not attainable right now and so and that's okay like it's a different it's a different season and whatever that season might look like for you especially if you are also in little years uh, to really think about what you in your season of life currently right now today what you need to create that vision in your home 
So I mentioned simplifying, I mentioned the open and go. The last thing I want to mention under this point is no matter what curriculum I am choosing, I cannot have it be too teacher intensive right now. Again, <laughs> I wish I could have that very detailed layout as far as a curriculum goes. This was honestly, looking back, this was one of my biggest things with the Good and the Beautiful Language Arts because it was very teacher intensive as far as the amount of reading that had to be covered to cover one topic or one subject. And it just was not attainable for me. I didn't wanna to have to pull in all these extra resources to get this one lesson to work for us. I wanted to literally be able to open and go and have this concept ready to be learned and ready to be mastered. And that's what the kind of Christian Light Education curriculum provides our family and I love it for that reason. But just not having Having something that's too teacher intensive is really important for me, especially going in on the next year here too, because I'm going to have a three-year-old <laughs> who's going to be ready to like wanting to do all the little uh, drawings and everything like that this year too. And she's already wanting to do what big brother and sister do. So it's going to be taking her under wing as well as the baby and everything as well. So it's going to be very busy. So with all those three combined, having something that is very simplified, open and go and not teacher intensive are the top three most important things to me right now. When I comes to choosing that curriculum and that does not mean to say that the actual core curriculum and the soundness of it does not matter it 100% does it's just if I get a curriculum that is only that but doesn't serve our family in the most important ways which is our relationships then it won't serve us at all so I hope that makes sense but yes having something easy and open to go is one of my biggest things right now in choosing a curriculum so the second thing that I look for when it comes to a curriculum, this goes back to the whole vision of our homeschool, and that is really thinking about prioritizing relationship and connection with my kiddos. Like I don't wanna choose a curriculum that I think they might like. A huge thing for me, and I've shared this in previous videos, is for example, a science curriculum. I got caught up in looking at all the new flashy science curriculums a couple of months ago, and I had one I had one narrowed down. I thought this is the, the best first and second grade science curriculum. I'm going with this, I'm going with the lab kit, that goes with it, it's gonna be amazing, my kids will love it. And then when I really thought about it, it's like, my kids are not gonna to wanna to do this. I mean, they might enjoy doing the experiments, but they really, the only thing they wanna do when it comes to science right now in little years is, is just to be outside of play. And I've talked about that in a previous video where really just that outdoor hands-on exploration, they're only little ones, and I want to try to make that a priority as far as making the connection with them the bigger priority than what curriculum we use because it's funny, every time I choose a higher grade or a higher curriculum, like when I was buying my curriculum for my kiddos this fall, I was like, I will never again have a little kindergartner or she'll never be a kindergartner again. And my first grader will never be a first grader again. And so really prioritizing relationship connection over curriculum is really important to me, especially for that science type thing in little years, if that makes sense. So prior prioritizing that, not getting caught up into what kind of everyone else is doing in their family versus what you want to be doing. Because a lot of my reasoning too of, of uh, choosing a science curriculum was I was afraid my kids were missing out on something. I was like, everybody's doing science curriculum in first and second grade. I better get on the bandwagon and do it as well. But it's just, it's not what our family was wanting to do. And so I was trying to like rein myself back in instead of buying something that, which would probably not end up getting used. And secondly, it just would not serve our family in this phase of life. So, and again, that goes back to that whole making our connection and relationship more of a priority than an actual textbook in the little years. So I can honestly not believe that we are finishing up our homeschool year. We have a month and a half left before we go on to our summer break. We'll probably do a few things in the summer and I'll share with you kind of what those are coming up in another video. But I can't believe it's almost over guys. I can't and like I said, I get so reflective towards the end of the year because I look back and like I said, remember like really putting the forefront in my mind is I will never they will never be like a kindergartner and first grader again and that's very kind of um humbling to me I think or I don't know what we're looking for but I guess humbling because it's crazy how far we have come throughout this year and seeing them grow so much in both their academics and not just academics but them as people that God has created them to be and that's been such a beautiful journey this year and I can't believe it's almost over it's a month and a half away and that's crazy to me so I Anyway, I, where, I was, where I was going with this is at this point in the year, we 100% sure know what didn't work, what is working beautifully, 
And one of the things when I'm buying curriculum for the following year, because I have pretty much 90% of everything bought that we'll be using for the next year, because at this point we have a very sound idea of what is absolutely working and what didn't work at all. I've shared kind of what did not work in some past videos. I'll have those linked down below if you do want to go look at that. And yeah, I, I have found that this time of the year, I draw, I'm really drawn to just reflecting on our homeschool, not just our curriculum, but our overall lifestyle, maybe our rhythm, our routines, what might need to change for the next year. And then with whether or not that be adding a new curriculum, new ideas, how will this serve our family? How will it not serve our family? And just to be really reflective on what that is. And again, when you're reflecting on what did or didn't work, to always keep in mind, and this is something that I have to remind myself, sorry, I'm getting over cold so <clears throat> my voice might go out here in a little bit anyway to always think and to always keep in the forefront of your mind what that vision for your homeschool is because that really will be the key to choosing everything whether that be everything in your home either everything in your curriculum choices and everything like that with with that vision so really reflect on what is working what is not working and again it's not just about curriculum it's about everything in your life <laughs> honestly even down to like the foods you eat and things like that and the activities that you do outside of the home, that if, if you travel and things like that, just everything has to do with the atmosphere in your home. And so that's something that I am learning to reflect on as well, as far as what might need to change, what rhythm things might need to change, do we need to do things a little bit differently? Do I need to be even more flexible than I already am? And I honestly think the most important thing to reflect on is what didn't work, because we know what does work. That's why we keep doing it and that's how we use it. But for the things that don't work, why is it not working? Is there something is it just a phase of life? Is that why it's not working? Is it because of this? That's why it's not working. Can we cut back on that? Is that why it's not working? And things like that. So really reflect on what's not working, but not just what it is, but why, like the reason why, so you can make that change for next year. And that's something that I am doing slowly here as we work through kind of the last few curriculum purchases for the following year and kind of our new rhythm and what that will look like for us, for us in the next coming school year. So the last thing I wanted to mention when it comes to choosing homeschooling curriculum, and that is really kind of separating the two versions of myself, or I'm sure if you're a homeschool mama, you can probably relate, but that is the practical side of us and the fantasy side of us. And sometimes I want to combine the two, and it, again, it's not practical, especially when it comes to homeschooling curriculum. Now my fantasy self, the mom that I wish and dream I could be, would be the mom that does 20 crafts a day, that is 100% involved in every single aspect of every single thing my kids touch, and everything like that when it comes to really being amidst in their play and there comes a time where I had I had to kind of choose between a that open and go curriculum this heavy intensive teacher curriculum but also caused a lot of stress because we're not covering anything with that curriculum and you kind of have to like weigh what is most important to you and for me I knew that I could not keep up on the housework and when I mean housework I mean cooking we cook a lot from scratch so cooking healthy meals for my kiddos was a huge priority for me um, not I don't want to say that it's above like the craftiness like doing crafts with my kids but I knew I couldn't do everything I couldn't uh, cook them healthy meals keep up on the house and laundry create that peaceful home atmosphere spend uh, quality time with them we do all the read alouds do the homeschooling core curriculums plus be present enough to do all of the crafts and stuff. Now that doesn't mean that we don't do crafts, we 100% do during the week. We always either color or do something every single day. So it's not that we don't, it's just I can't have a curriculum or something that is going to require all of that. So my fantasy side wishes I could. Like I wish I could be that mom that is just beautifully gifted in all the crafts. I'm just not and that's okay. So I have just different priorities and every family is going to be different when it comes to their priorities. So really think about your practical side, like what is the actual phase of life that you're in right now? What does that look like for you? And then kind of choose curriculum really to, again, and I mentioned this several times, really to serve you. You don't ever really want to serve your curriculum because I can get caught up into doing that, honestly, depending on what the curriculum is. But yeah, this year I learned to kind of step back from what I wished I was and just think more practically speaking because as I mentioned the cooking and the laundry and read alouds and just spending that quality time with the kiddos is more important I think than having that flashy uh, fancy curriculum that is more teacher intensive. I hope that made sense as far as what I'm trying to say here when it comes to choosing a curriculum but I think I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. I hope you guys got some either help or encouragement from it if you are getting ready to choose curriculum. It is again very 
very overwhelming, especially if you're new to homeschooling. If you are new to homeschooling, I am so happy that you decided to walk this journey. There is not a more beautiful journey to follow. I have thoroughly loved it and I'm looking forward to all the years to come and all the memories that to come to when it comes to homeschooling our little ones. I hope you guys did find some encouragement from this. I'm excited to be sharing with you kind of our curriculum choices for the 2023-24 school year. I know you probably know what most of them are by now, but I will still make the videos and do full flip throughs for you guys like I have done in the past. But until my next video, I hope you guys have a great day, whatever you're doing, and God bless. Bye. Bye.